get started here. And uh, welcome to our computer science showcase. Um, Megan, you want to take it away? Yes, thank you so much, Ray Kay. I appreciate that. Um, welcome, and we are so happy that you've joined us today. My name is uh, Megan, and I am the Program Manager for Business Computer Science and Technologies. In just a minute here, we're going to be uh, showing you a video uh, regarding our digital media program, our network administration program, and our programming and web development programs. Uh, whether you're a high school graduate, you're still completing high school, maybe you've been out of school for a while, or you're an adult in the workforce and are looking to retool some of your skills, uh, we have classes for you. If you're uh, just looking into one or two classes and you just want to uh, gain some information about computer science classes, then um, we certainly have something to offer you as well. This spring, we are going to offer um, a hybrid format for uh, some of our classes, which means that you're going to spend part of your time on campus in class and part of your time online. We'll also offer fully online options for students this spring. Uh, we want you to know that we have multiple options for um, certificates and for degrees uh, in the computer science programs. We offer an AAS, which is um, a two-year degree, which will allow you to go straight into the workforce upon completing that degree. We also offer some transfer options, and those are AS degrees, which will allow you to take two years here at Parkland, and then you'll be transferring to a four-year school or university. Uh, we also offer certificate options. Uh, we have many of those, and some of those you can complete in as little as one semester. We'll be talking a little bit about our Google IT program, and that will be um, on our film here in just a few minutes. At Parkland, we're committed to our student success. We want our students to succeed and we're here to help you out. We offer tutoring both virtually and in person at um, our CAS uh, area. We also offer a Perkins book loan program. And if you qualify, then you can check out textbooks for a semester at a time at no cost to you. We have many scholarships through our Parkland Foundation and a new system to apply, which allows you to just complete uh, one application and it will uh, qualify you to apply for uh, many scholarships in your area. We have lots of students who receive um, funding through our scholarships. And we also offer um, Wi-Fi uh, in several of our parking areas to allow our students to come and utilize that um, on their laptops or their other devices. We have loanable technology through our Parkland Library and many other resources to help you succeed. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you the video that our faculty have prepared for you. And then following that, Mary Kay from Admissions will come back and tell you everything you need to know to get registered and become a Parkland student. Mary Kay, can you see my screen? I can't quite see it yet. Can't see it yet, okay. Let's try again here. All right, any luck this time, Mary Kay? No, I'm afraid it's still not there. Not there yet, okay. We're gonna try another time here. See here. It's showing it's sharing from my area, but we're going to keep going and pressing on. All right. Ah, oh, there it is. Are we there? Okay. Okay. Very oh. good. <laughs> Thank you for your patience, everyone. And we'll go ahead and get started here. My name is Derek Dallas. I'm the department chair for business and computer science, and I'm also a digital media instructor. And I want to take a few minutes to give you a little bit of an idea of what our introductory digital media courses are like. When you begin the program, 
you're going to be taking Digital Media Foundations. And in this class, you're actually going to be kind of learning how to create art using the computer, but also learning computer skills as you do it. So for instance, this image is actually created by code. The code that the students write um, creates different shapes and different, uh, little different forms and different tonal values. So we are talking about art courses or art principles, but we're also learning how to write code. So the code would look something like this, where you are creating um, the line or the stroke, the line width, um, and defining those things with a value. So right off the bat, you're creating art, learning about, uh, learning about computer programming, and um, once you begin to do this sort of stuff, we move into uh, working with uh, color, and we start talking about color, color families, and how you define colors using code as well. So we go back and take these, uh, these well, these are selfies, and so you create selfies and add color to them and create kind of like your own unique art. Once we do this, we move into um, creating a composition where you actually start using design principles such as balance and rhythm and uh, unity, talking about depth and foreground and background and contrast, and we start creating our own unique images. But all of this is created using code. And so it's a really great introduct introduction to both computers and art. Now, once we get comfortable making art through writing code, we then start using software. And the software allows us to play with images and manipulate images and learn how to remove or take parts from one image and combine them, but then learning how to manipulate them so that they blend together to create what we call a hybrid creature, if you will. So you take like, for example, uh, the face of a, a, an orangutan from one image and you superimpose it over the image of another, but you have to manipulate that image so that the colors balance and that the, it, it flows seamless, seamlessly so that you create a really unique uh, image. So it's a, it's a fun way to kind of learn these Photoshop skills where that you'll be using those skills in the future in other courses. Then once we learn these types of skills, we move into what is the three-dimensional realm. And we actually learn to create images or objects in the three dimensions. So for instance, one of the first things we learn how to do is how to create an image by looking at a reference and creating uh, the or modifying and generating the three-dimensional model to uh, be like our reference. So in this example, we modeled a fork. And so what's cool about it is that you generate a 3D model like this fork here. Once it's smooth, the really cool thing is that here's the actual 3D print of that model. So you can make something in the computer and turn it into an actual object, which is super exciting. Now, once you are kind of familiar with these 2D elements, like by creating an image with code, working with them in Photoshop, creating a three-dimensional model and turning that into a physical thing, then we can also look at how we can use those three-dimensional models in a game engine, such as Unreal. If you're familiar with game engines, we then create uh, a room, and in that room, we, uh, we work on lighting, and you actually begin to, you actually start to build an interior space and add lights to it. So for instance, we will put a light into a room, and then you can see how this light illuminates that space, and you can do architectural type of um, constructions, or you can create your own space, or recreate your, you know, your office, or your bedroom, or your kitchen, or something like that, or create something completely new. So this, at the end of the day, combines all of these skills that you start out with at the beginning of the semester till the end. So these fundamental digital media skills are the same thing you're going to be using as we go through the program. So Digital Media Foundations is one of the key courses that you will want to take, and that's why we start you out in that. So once you are finished with Digital Media Foundations, we move into 2D animation. Now, 2D animation is 
where we start learning about the fundamental skills of movement in animation, and we also look at the history of animation. So we watch lots of films so that you can build up your, your own knowledge of what animations have looked like in the past and the pioneers of animation that have pretty much made the technological advancements and aesthetic advancements to the styles that people have used. And then you can see how it all begins to kind of uh, progress until our, our, till today. So in this course, we have you doing stop motion where you actually draw, well, by hand to hand, so you're making animation. Here's an example of student work where they are drawing every frame of animation. So every, frame, every second of animation is made up of 30 individual pictures. And so you have to learn how to make that image move with the control that you want. So it's moving slow, is it moving fast, does it hold still? But then it also uh, remains alive and active. So every frame is drawn. Once you kind of get those basic principles, those apply to pretty much all the animations we do, whether you use the computer or stop motion. So stop motion, uh, the stop uh, motion projects allow you to actually use a camera and human beings interacting with objects. So you're actually taking now, you're not drawing these images, you're actually posing people or objects in a specific position, taking a picture, moving them slightly, taking a picture, and creating, uh, and creating animations like that. The final thing that you'll be doing in digital media is creating basically like a, a movie title, or if you're familiar with introductions to television shows or introductions to movies, where you take a variety of things, like you take audio, images, video, and things that you might scan, artwork that you might have, all kinds of things go into making uh, a type of, uh, of uh, this type of movie. It's not a trailer, but it's an intro. And so you have typography can, uh, to think about and all that sort of thing. And the goal is to create, uh, to create a, a more active and dynamic thing that might lead into a film. So for example, So what you want to be doing is you, you go, you, you gather images, you take your own video footage, you work with audio and sound and you edit it out to make it, so you're blending in, in this case, dialogue, you're blending in an audio track and adding in typography and all kinds of elements and working with all these different layers to create something new and uh, unique that goes along with the theme of a movie or a television show. It doesn't have to exist, but uh, it can lead you into that show. So after you've taken 2D animation, you will be then moving into the world of 3D and 3D animation. And that's, and that's where you take all of these things that we've talked about in Digital Media Foundations and 2D animation. All of that is in your head. All of those skills are there and you begin to build three-dimensional worlds and then animating in the third dimension as well. And so once you've, once you've kind of gotten on that path, you're gonna know if this is something that you love uh, or something that, you know, maybe it isn't for you. But here's what I want you to think about. These classes are for the right now more than ever because there's so many people using video. You know, if you want to make better videos for your YouTube channel, if you want to make better videos for your PowerPoint presentations, all of that sort of stuff, these skills will get you there. If you're a fine artist and you can't get to the studio anymore, you can create art through the computer. You know, there's a lot of people who are afraid of learning through the computer. And I wanna encourage you to try this out. Parkland College is a place to try new things. Come in, you can learn at home if you can't come to class, but we will definitely be working with you to make sure that you get these skills and that, that you learn them at your pace, if you will. So fine artists, if you're an engineer and you wanna learn more about modeling, 3D printing, if, you want, if you're a handyman and you wanna to go to the next level, uh, you know, we're going to say, how can I take something uh, and use the computer to, to generate things that can be 3D printed? And so if you're a crafter, say you make jewelry, you want to make, you want to make custom jewelry, this is the beginning of where you could do that sort of thing in, in ways that we've never had and never been possible for. So I would encourage anyone who is out there, you want to be creative, and especially right now, it's never been a better time to learn these skills 
and to get involved in digital media. Network administration is enormous. Uh, you could start with the phone in your pocket, or if you have a tablet, uh, a workstation, all of those devices connect to a network. What does that network look like? What is that network, uh, what, what encompasses that network? Well, you have, could be wireless, which is a whole other sector of network administration. Uh, it could be a physical cable that goes back to a switch. Uh, that then leads back to a router. So you get all the infrastructure behind the network itself. Uh, you have email servers, you have web servers, you have databases. Um, so network administrators maintain all that hardware and the operating systems that support uh, email servers and databases and, and, and mail servers. Uh, and then security, uh, the overall security of the network to make sure that users' data is uh, secure and backed up in case of some kind of catastrophe uh, in the network operating center. Network administration is for anyone that's curious about how computers and networks actually operate. Uh, I think someone that has mechanical knowledge or interest is a really good candidate for network administration because you really have to dig into how things work. Problem solving, mechanical skills, all those are really good because when you work in network administration, there's so many components. You have the computers, you have the networks, you have the switches, you have the routers. There are so many different pieces and components that make the whole thing work that to be able to understand and break down what works and what doesn't work in troubleshooting skills, basically, is what it comes down to. Uh, if you're good at troubleshooting skills, you have a mechanical mind, you, you're, you really want to know how things work. Um, those are really good qualities to have for the network administration field. We have a number of students, uh, anywhere from help desk support to network administration to chief information officers that have come through uh, the Parkland program. Um, we have network operations center managers uh, at Pavlov Media was one of my graduates. So there, there's a wide variety of opportunities for students. We also have students that have moved on to uh, SIU or uh, University of Illinois Springfield to uh, get their four-year uh, degree in either just general uh, network information systems or even uh, computer security. So we do have a number of certificate programs and we have an AAS program. I would suggest any of the students coming out of high school uh, would want to pursue the AAS. A lot of our certificates are designed for um, members of the community that are maybe switching jobs or they have some experience in computers, but they're interested in a particular certification and they need a little extra education in Cisco or Linux or some uh, specific facet of network administration. But I would definitely uh, encourage younger students to go for the AAS. It is possible to do well without having a previous experience in IT. Uh, the Google IT certificate that we offer was based on students coming in with zero knowledge of uh, computing. Uh, it's also the first class of our AAS program. So absolutely, if you don't have experience, uh, you can do quite well uh, in this field. The Google IT certificate is based on five separate courses. Uh, it was designed originally on, for an online platform, and it was designed to be done in uh, roughly six months. Uh, we've uh, accelerated and compressed that course into a one semester, six credit hour course. So all five of those classes are done within a 16 week period. Uh, and when you get done with that, it, you do get the Google certificate. Uh, Google has some resources that will help uh, in your job search, your uh, resume preparation, uh, and they also assist in other ways in finding employment after you've completed uh, the certificate. We have a number of students that uh, work in the community. Pavlov Media is probably one of our biggest employers from our program. Uh, Promenek, which is a local web hosting company, uh, hires a lot of our students. Uh, we have several people over at uh, Busey. Uh, so Busey Banks hired uh, a number of our students. 
Parkland College has hired a number of our students. So there are a lot of employers in the community that really, uh, really seek out Parkland graduates of the network administration program. Hi, I'm Ken Urban, and I'm the Director of Data Systems and Development here at Parkland College. And I welcome this opportunity to, to share what goes on in my program uh, with you all. Um, our program consists of, of three basic parts. Those three parts are going to be a transfer of computer science program, uh, a developmental web program for developing things on the web, and then database and accessing databases and using databases. Um, to discuss those three programs in, in slightly more detail. Um, our transfer program um, is going to start off with a few different programming languages. The first one we're going to start off with is Python, um, which is a really popular language nowadays. And it, it's sort of an introductory language at, at some stage. Um, then we have two different sort of pathways to go through uh, the bigger part of the program, we have one in C++ and one in Java. Some schools require C++, some schools require Java, so we offer both of them. And then we're going to um, discuss object, both of those are object-oriented programming languages, and we'll discuss them in depth as we go through those courses. Um, we're going to meet together at the end and in a data structures course, which actually uses Python. Again, so we revisit where we started from and in this data structures course, we're going to discuss the analysis of algorithms and all of the mathematical backgrounds necessary to succeed in, in computer science in the transfer program. Um, all of our courses are accepted by the IAI, and some of them are accepted in some schools. Others would prefer other ones. So you, of course, need to check your school that you're transferring to to make sure that everything is accepted. Now, along with the, the transfer program and the theoretical computer science, we also have some practical skills uh, to, for workforce employment. Um, we offer a full stack web development program. By full stack, we mean both the front end, the browser, and the back end, the server. The front end is, is what you see, and the back end is the thing that makes it all happen. Starting with the web, you need to, of course, begin with the basic HTML and understand how those pieces are put together in order to develop stuff on the screen. You add styles to that, uh, the style sheets in order to, to make it look better and to be able to move it from page to page so you have consistency over different web pages. Um, after that, we'll talk about how to make your browser do things uh, with JavaScript, one of the, the certainly the most popular language nowadays. Um, and then on the server side, we're going to use PHP. There, there are lots of server side technologies. We just picked PHP because um, it's the easiest to access. There certainly are others, but the idea behind using our web stuff is not necessarily to teach to one language, but to understand the concepts behind it, to understand how to write to a database using SQL, to understand how authentication works and how to, to store passwords safely, how to, to make sure that, that no one's uh, inserting code in, into your, your database and things like that. Um, our database consists of uh, some database programming, learning how to, to send things to your database, to pull things out of your database, um, how to design that database so it's efficient and fast and, and not um, wasting space or, or unsecure, right? We're going to look at that, the security of the database, how to protect your data. Um, we're going to use SQL as the main programming language for that. And we're going to talk, again, a lot about security. And, and, and data science and how to take what, what you've done and expand it for, for future um, needs, like, like popular things like data science, um, data warehousing. Now, our program also includes relationships with other areas in the college. Um, there's an awesome mobile programming uh, certificate that we kind of work with and can be included. There is digital media here at Parkland. Um, there is network administration, all of those programs, we all work closely together so that you can work for one or for both and get multiple degrees or just look and try and see what it's like to do network administration. So again, I, I would love to have you contact us and uh, become part of our program and I look forward to seeing you in class one of these days. Thank you very much.
All right, well, thank you so much. Uh, Mary Kay, I'm gonna turn it over to you now. Wonderful, that was really cool. I always love seeing, I gotta be honest, I really love seeing all that digital media stuff. It looks so cool. I can never do it, but it looks really, really cool. Um, so I'm gonna be talking about kind of the nuts and bolts type of thing, what it takes to become a, a, a Parkland student. So give me a moment, I'm gonna share my screen to, uh, to give you a better idea of kind of what we're talking about. Um, I, this is kind of the agenda for today. So we've done all the videos and now we're gonna talk about process. So um, let's take a look and see. The first step, of course, is applying to Parkland College. So no matter what you wanna do, whether it's a certificate or the degree, you must apply to Parkland College. We have to have an application from you. If you're doing a certificate degree, we encourage you to go ahead and request your high school transcripts. Uh, no matter how long it's been since you graduated from high school, that's what we need to accept you as a degree or a certificate speaker. And uh, once we have those, we're gonna accept you. And then if you've done college elsewhere, it's really helpful to have those um, transcripts as well, because that could work for placement. It may give you some of the classes you need. So again, have your official uh, college transcript sent to Parkland as well. And then if you uh, just recently graduated from high school, we could also use your ACT or SAT perhaps uh, for placement. So send those over as well. So this is kind of the first step, the application transcript so we can get you accepted um, as a student here at Parkland. The next step I always talk to folks is about financial aid because then obviously you have to know how you're gonna pay for these classes. And the first thing when we talk about financial aid, we encourage everyone to fill out the FAFSA. It's the free application for federal student aid. It's at FAFSA.gov, very important that it says .gov. Um, and this is the form that determines whether you can qualify for Pell Grants, which is free federal money, whether you qualify for MAP money, which is state money. Um, and oftentimes it also determines whether you can qualify for scholarships. So it's kind of like doing your taxes. I encourage folks to fill out their FAFSA every year, whether you think you're gonna get it or whether you don't, um, just do it and that way, um, if there is free money out there for you, you'll have the best opportunity of getting it. It's also important to keep in mind uh, when this FAFSA opens. So believe it or not, for folks that are coming in for fall of 2021, they should be doing their FAFSA right now. I know it seems like a long time out. That's the way they do it now. October 1 every year opens up for the following year. So do your FAFSA now. We encourage folks to have it done before Thanksgiving for the fall of 2021 folks. If there's any, anybody interested in, interested in coming for spring, uh, you're gonna actually do two FAFSAs. You're gonna do the FAFSA from the 2020 year, 2021 20, year, and also the next one that's not due till, um, till the fall. So uh, it's really important. Financial aid is a big deal. Um, make sure you get that done. And also scholarships. I've noticed I've given you the link for the scholarships. Parkland offers a ton of money in scholarships. In fact, we have a deadline coming up for the spring scholarships uh, this weekend. So in case you're out there and looking at spring classes, uh, look for those scholarships out there. Assessment. So after you've been accepted, we've got to find out kind of where you get to start. And we do that by measuring your skills in reading and English and math. Now that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to give you a test. It could mean that you have ACTs and SATs recently that we could use those. It could mean we have recent high school grades and we might be able to use those. It could mean you have previous college work and we can use that as well. But if we do need to take placement tests, your scores are super important. And you're gonna be tested, you, you need to find those balances in English, reading and math. And if you score above 100 level in those, then you're considered at college level. If you score below 100 level, it's considered developmental. The reason this is important because if you test in developmental classes, you still have to take those classes and be successful on them before you get to the next one. Um, so we wanna make sure that you do your very best on the placement test. And it's not that you can't take the test again, you can. In fact, this, this semester, we're not even charging for a retake. Uh, but obviously to save yourself some time, take, take, it, um, take it, the advantage of, of, of studying in advance and preparing for it and do the best on the first time round. If you have questions about how to do that, I've given you the link there at parkland.edu backslash assessment. And they're the folks that will get you all set up. Right now we are doing uh, remote testing. You can do it in, in the comfort of your home. The other thing I always mention when I talk about a, um, the assessment is making sure that at any time you had a disability, um, maybe in high school you had an IEP or you were given extended time on tests. Well, this is something we need to know before you actually take your placement testing because we want to see if we can give you those same kind of accommodations. So I encourage folks, if, if in high school you had any of those issues, please bring us an IEP or 
uh, recently diagnosed um, information from a doctor so that we can work with you both not only for the assessment test itself, but also as you go through the pro process. I know a lot of students will say, oh, well, I don't plan on using um, the extended time in college, and that's great. But in case you did need it, even for one class, we would have to go through this process to get everything set up. So accessibility services at parkland.edu are the folks that can help you with that. So please reach out to them if that's something uh, that you need. So we talked a little bit about tuition when we were talking about financial aid, but I wanna make sure folks are kind of aware of what our tuition rates are. If you see this map here, this is our map of District 505. That's where Parkland, uh, Parkland covers this whole district. And it's a pretty large district from Piper City in the north down to Arcola and then Leroy to Homer, um, all, parts of all different kinds of, of, of counties, but notice we don't have all of any one. Um, and normally when you're accepted, we're gonna give you on your acceptance email, it will say, um, and you're considered an in-district student or an out-of-district student or an out-of-state student. But I wanna make sure you're kind of aware of what the differences are. An in-district is 171 credit hours, which means a class costs about $500. So a full-time is somewhere around 2,000, 2,500, depends on how many classes you're taking. If you go outside of that green section, but inside the state, you're considered out of district, and all of a sudden the tuition goes to 386 a credit hour, somewhere around $1,000 a class, something like that. So the reason I bring this up um, is because a lot of folks will come in and say, well, I'm moving to Champaign, that's going to make me in district. Actually, there are more steps to making yourself in district than just moving here. So if it's something that you're interested in doing, please, please let us know in admissions. We can help you in walking through the process of residency. Uh, I've given you some other information here about tier twos. Tier twos really only apply for health professions and some diesel or Ford, uh, Ford Asset and so forth. Um, there are some things called career agreements. So perhaps if you're in another uh, area of the state and your community college doesn't have digital media, for, for instance, so if that's kind of a, a newer thing, it might be possible for you to get what's called a career agreement. Basically, your college says they don't have that program and we have that program, you've been accepted here, and you can get the industry great for attending. That's something to keep in mind if that's the program you're interested in. The other great thing about Parkland College is that we have so many support services. We have this wonderful facility called the Center for Academic Success, or D120, where we put all of our helping functions together. And so we have math help, and we have uh, English professors on the writing lab, we have tutors, we have peer tutors, all sorts of things are all in this one space. And even while we're virtual, that, that space still exists. So we want folks to be uh, successful no matter where they're starting. And that's something to keep in mind uh, where, where this is where you go to get that kind of help. Uh, the other thing is Parkland itself does not have any housing. We've got a ton of apartments in this town. And so I've given you a link there, parkland.edu backslash housing for some of the options in town. Uh, there's a lot of student-oriented apartments where maybe it's a it's four people sharing a common kitchen, living room, dining room, but each one has their own link, uh, oh, their own um, bedroom and bath that they're paying for, that kind of thing. So check those out. I encourage you in this town definitely check them out before you sign any leases. Uh, lots of apartments, but they they there's a big range in, in what's available. The other thing is transportation. Um, if you if you come to Parkland, there it's free parking, so that's great if you're driving. But if you're not driving, you still really can get around Champaign Urbana on a bus. We probably have four or five different buses that come to Parkland every hour and take you all over Champaign Urbana, and you can get a bus pass for eighty four dollars a year, which is an awesome deal, or a dollar every time you ride it. So I want to bring up some important dates. Uh, if anybody is out there that's looking at spring, spring registration is open now. So definitely encourage you to come talk to us. Uh, I've, I've given my uh, address here at admissions at parkland.edu or uh, our phone number is 217-351-2482. Definitely uh, email us or um, admissions at parkland.edu is a great way to get to us um, just because um, you, can, you can do that at two in the morning. We'll get back to you the next day. Um, spring registration is open. We will start classes on January 11th. Uh, so it's like, that's why I said it, you, the time is running, uh, running short. So let us know if you want to come then. Fall enrollment will open uh, April 5th. So if you're thinking about coming for August, you've got a little few more months uh, to get everything in order, but we'd be happy to talk with you. And I encourage folks to reach out and, uh, and let us know what they're, what they're interested in. So uh, I think I covered kind of all the, the basics um, today. If you have any questions, um, please, please let us know. 
Uh, we're here for you, admissions at parkland.edu. If we can't answer them, we'll be happy to turn it over to Megan and, and, or, and her team, and they'll be happy to answer those as well. We want to thank you for coming out today. Have a good day now.